So welcome to my channel, Miss Pronounce Adventures, and this is a Chinese diesel heater service video. So I've had my original heater in the van now for just over 2,100 run hours. I've never serviced it once. Um, it is not your normal one necessarily because I replaced the original controller with a afterburner, which is a, pr a project made by an Australian guy called Ray, which adds so much extra functionality, a perfectly working thermostat and a lot more. And that's how I've run the heater. So looking on the statistics for my Chinese diesel heater, I've had about 88 days of runtime with the diesel heater turned on, and that's about 2,100 hours, and that's only logged since I put the afterburner. There's probably a couple of months before that of when I didn't have the afterburner, so it's probably about 2,500 hours runtime. On an average of that 2,000 plus hours, I used 358 litres of diesel, and that equates to around 170 millilitres per hour, which is just above low. So the majority of the heater's runtime has always been on low. And that's notorious for clogging up heaters. So it'll be interesting to see that when I service it, what it looks like. So this is the afterburner interface. You have your temperature, time, litres of diesel. You can reset your tank as well. So I usually, at the beginning of trips, I'll reset the how much fuel's been used. GPIO options, menu. And then when the heat is running, you have access to the temperature sensor. So these controllers add their own separate temperature sensor inside. And the core temperature, how much fuel has been using, pump speed, hertz, and a few other bits and bobs as well. And you have access to an online MQTT, which has information about the heater. And this is the page where I can see my statistics of how long the heat heat or heater has run for. The reason I'm doing a service now is the bearings for the fan motor are sounding a bit crap and scrapey, which you can just hear here. It's getting progressively worse and I am going to replace it. So I've spent about £3 per bearing to buy some Japanese made high quality bearings. Another thing I'm going to do is when I sold it, I used the original um, stainless steel Chinese made exhaust and that has pretty much rusted through. So I'm going to be replacing it with some nice Wabasto brand um, exhaust. On top of that, I'm going to be replacing the original crap Jubilee clips I got with some proper exhaust clips. And I'm also going to try out uh, replacing the original muffler. So this is the original star muffler you can you, you see with the Chinese diesel heaters. And I'm going to replace it with a new style one, which I've seen quite a few, well, I've seen a few people using online and they've been saying good things about actually it seems to be working and reducing the noise a little bit than these original ones were, which are a bit crap. So we're going to put that in as well. So for my heater, generally out of the two and a half years I've had it in and the 2000 plus run hours, it's been fine. I've probably had about four events with it. Um, an event being I blew the main fuse for the van when it was on once, so it did a hot shut down. Normally the heaters have to cool themselves down so you don't damage components. Uh, another time when in the Arctic, when I got hit by that storm and was blown into the ocean and then blowed off the road into a snowdrift, I clogged the exhaust uh, and that then caused the heater just to overheat and shut down. Well, the heater stopped working for some reason. I'm not entirely sure why, unless I blocked it when I've gone into that snowbank. The exhaust, I mean. Eventually that melted out within half an hour that night and restarted with no issues. A few days later on that Arctic trip as well, I went walking for the days, left it on, and I came back to a weird fan error um, where the fan was still running but the diesel heater was getting towards overheating. Right, back from my day out and I'm not quite sure what's up with the heater. The fan speed is all over the place and the case temperature is too hot. Well, too hot for the speed it's running. Um, but the, the main fan speed was just fluctuating strangely. I have no idea why that ever happened, but the following morning when I woke up, um, the fan had returned to normal and it's not been an issue ever since. Well, good morning. It's currently minus, where is it? It's minus 14 outside about, well, that says nine in here, but the thermometer for the heat, I said it's 12 degrees in here. Um, so I just kept it on low all night and it seems to have kept running, which is good. And one other time I had a random motor uh, issue where the heat, where the fan motor stopped, it overheated and shut down and then started up again with no problems. So apart from that, I've had no issues or no lasting issues. It will be interesting to see 
when I tear it down, what the how suited up the chamber is because it has been run mostly on low for its entire life. Unfortunately for me, um, someone built this van, me, with a really smart idea. Like, I've got my fridge here and I've got my kickboard underneath. Under the kickboard, it's plenty of space for the diesel heater. So the diesel heater lives underneath the fridge. And the idea being, well, the fridge has just got four screws to pull the whole thing out and then I can access the diesel heater. Unfortunately, someone put this chair here, me. So it's very difficult to get this to come out so that I can access the diesel heater and then we can get under the van and try and remove it. Let's show you inside. So this is where my heater lives. It's got a little plinth sitting where the fridge sits and a gap underneath it. So all being well, if I can go disconnect the exhaust and the air intake and the bolts from underneath, it should lift out. This was cut so I can actually get the top cover off if I ever need to do something minor, such as the glow plug needed replacing. I can just take this top panel off from here and access it. Right, so, need to get those bolts undone, those rusted Jubilees clips. Everything else is cut, is pretty fine. I replaced the original um, fuel line along uh, with good Webasto stuff. This hard line's fine. Whilst you can see there's little evidences of rust on these clamps, they're fine, I'm not going to touch these, these are all still working. So I am going to undo all of this and... Oh, you can see why we're going to be replacing all of these, these are rusted. It's starting to get whole holes in there as well. And that clip rusted away a long ago, so I've got a steel cable tie on it. All right, let's start taking it apart. Here's what the ridiculousness has turned into. Wasn't much better holding that on, was it? There's a tetanus injection waiting to happen. Right, clamped off the fuel line, mainly as I would rather it did not drop fuel over all over me. Right, got it off, not too much fuel leaking out either. All being well, that this is now free and loose. <laughs> Took a little bit of prying, but uh, the unit itself is actually out. So this is what the bearing sounds like. Yeah, a little bit grindy. This is one of my spare heaters. Uh, the reason I'm not swapping the entire heater out is it's worked no problem. I don't, I'm not going to replace the heater with my spare with one of my spare units. I'm just going to replace the bearings um, because I'm happy with how it works. It's not clogged up running on low. It's been good. So I'm just going to keep it as it is. Right, let's have a look inside. So I thought I'd just put gloves on mainly because I'm expecting it to be dirty inside at least. So all being, I don't plan to replace the, the seals. I'm just hoping I don't ruin them. Um, that's gonna be a problem if I do. I mean, I've initial thoughts, this doesn't look very sooty at all. It's just quite bright. Oh God, there we go. Ah yes, I uh, completely destroyed the seal of what exactly I did not want to do. That's a problem. Yeah, my seal is uh, completely disintegrating. That is not ideal. It's gonna be really fragile. Well, that doesn't look too bad at all for, I think it was about a day and a half of actual being turned on runtime. 2000 hours that looks fine so let's be delicate and put that down somewhere right let's just have a look down the hole there so whilst there's a little bit of debris at the top of the atomizer i think i'm actually going to leave it well the camera stopped recording when i did the great reveal but i am pretty happy with that for 2,000 run hours. Just a 
tiny bit of carbon build up near the top. I didn't manage to break the uh, gasket onto the grout. And that's the burn chamber. Pretty happy with that. Now, this is the tricky bit. All I need to get is one, the tolerances and the clearance in there is tiny. And these are sort of push fit in. These are apparently quite easy to get off. These are less so and are prone to breaking. So I have to do my best not to uh, not to snap or damage the internal fan. So before I start pulling it back to point of no return, I'm just going to measure all the uh, sort of differences and toggles. I will fast forward this bit of the video, but I can then look back at it. Right, let's uh, do my best to get it apart. Okay, well, that one just pulled straight off. You, know, you can already see a lot of schmoo and stuff around the bearings, which we want to replace. Right, so now I've just got to figure out how to get it off this side. Look, I've released the motor. And we're just going to tap the centre out, basically. Rattle in. There we go. Off. Nice and clean in there. Motor out. Time to... It's not going through there, is it? Right. Time to get the, the old bearings out. One old bearing. And it's got some sort of cover around it. Okay, well, we'll make sure that's uh, put back in. The motors themselves are balanced. I am starting to wear away the metal work there, but there's no sign anywhere of getting through. Yeah, I'll say we've got plenty uh, plenty depth of the uh, metal still left. So as you can wear the bushes out, you can also wear these contacts out. So each one of these is connected to, I think, I believe it's the op the op their opposite one. The problem can happen is that if you wear through those and it's no longer, well, it's no longer making a circuit, that's your problem. But this seems good. Let's not drop this because this is balanced. And then let's tapity tap this bearing out. All right, that'll make my life difficult and uh, take the, the spring out. Oh, okay, that whole plate comes off. Oh, I could lift the springs in. Well, that was the issue with the bearing. I can hardly even turn that by hand. Completely and utterly stuck. Oh, a little bit of movement. But that would make sense for where it is. It is the one next to the uh, the brushes, and the brushes wear down, they produce all of that. They all get stuck in there. Right, so two knackered bearings. If anyone wants to know that these bearings are 625Zs, and I think I'm putting in I'm putting in Japanese 625ZZ ESO bearings instead. What the second Z means, I don't know, but people on the internet said Z or ZZ is compatible. Right, I've just forgotten how those springs go back, so I'm gonna to have to pause the video and then go back and look through. Right, we're back, reseated, they just had one little twist. So, what's next? Right, new bearing is what's next. Right, so who didn't check which way, which way around? 
So they really just fit in there so easily. Okay. okay. Which way around this went? Me. Right, time to press fit this back on, I guess. That was a little bit too far. A little bit too far. Right, happy with the clearances now. Get the other end back on. Here we go. That's a difference from before. So got to fix this gasket on. Just cleaning off the old goof, the old gaskets. I mean, to be honest, the gaskets are paper. I'm going to reuse this gasket because it's not damaged. I'm also just going to make sure I don't damage it. And give it... I'm going to give this a quick clean, really. I've taken the executive decision. I need a new toothbrush for the van, mainly because it's the nearest thing to me. Right. That's about it from 2,000 hours. So that is pretty much it. There's almost nothing to clean off that one. That's all the debris from two years worth of, uh, well, for 2,000 hours worth of runtime in the burn chamber. All of this debris is from the motor, uh, which either I don't know if it's this soot which gets through or it's just the, the worn down um, brushes. But that's the dirt from two years running on mostly low. Right, let's go air that up and crack on. Oh, I am going to go steal a new gasket from somewhere. These gaskets are only just, as far as I'm aware, pretty much paper. They just get really brittle. So I've got a figure new heater, which is unused. So I'm going to go steal its gasket. Right. So I have got a spare gasket from a different heater, which doesn't look like I've, I don't think these other heaters had any runtime. So slightly different material this one so let's put that delicately over there and let's put back together this one there we go all right time to get the pcb back on Forget to put that back on over. I think we'll just blow some of the dust off this as well. There we go. So the heater all assembled. I'm just going to clean up the flashes I've realised which weren't removed on this heater when it was made. Right, heater is back in one piece and time to get it back in that cupboard. Um, that's just gonna take a little bit of a while. I'm probably swearing, so I will turn the camera off and just crack on. So next up is the exhaust. Um, just like these heat, just like these exhausts, they have to be mounted in a certain direction from the top. And then there's a little drain hole in the bottom for any condensation of water can drip out orientation for these is pretty similar there are two holes there and so i'm going to mount it up that way i don't really know how i'm going to mount it at the minute i'm guessing i'm going to have to use two flat brackets with uh, the heater going in at the top one and it coming out at the bottom and what it kind of looks like inside i don't know if you can see let's put the, let's put the light on is it's a pipe filled of holes and the pipe pretty much just snakes back and forth like that it's filled of holes and it seems to be people are saying that it actually does have a quite an effect on the noise yeah that's what it looks like inside you can see it loops back it seems to be a cast piece of pipe filled of holes and i'm guessing that's 
fiberglass or something in there. So that's what these new ones look like inside. So, all being well, because these are larger, I can just fit this on here and tighten them up. Uh, well, okay, I might hand tighten them first so they slip down and then do it. Right, put the camera down. Right, we've got the muffler mounted and I'm just going to uh, cut the exhaust and get it all up and then we'll give it a test and then I'll start cable tying and cleaning everything up. Right, it's run, that might look near, but uh, that's about where the pipe was used to be. So I'm gonna run a second piece um, off the end of here, and then it will finish down here where the old bracket was. But first, before I start any further, I kinda wanna just get it turned on to make sure everything's functioning. So as far as the heat is concerned, it shouldn't know any different because what well, it's been is unplugged. Oh, that's a lot more quiet. And that will have the fridge back on it as well. Yeah, that's certainly a lot more quiet. Get it turned on. Hopefully it should need to prime as the uh, clamp off the fuel line so the fuel shouldn't have run too far back down. It's so much more quiet than it used to be, which is a good sign. Fan is a mess. All being well, it's going to work. So currently igniting still as the glow plug's all oh, ignited. You'll be able to see it's if it's actually ignited if this starts climbing. Yep, there we go, ignited. Yep. Substantially uh, more quiet than it used to be. Well, it's... It's just dropped down to almost low and it's extremely quiet again, which is good. Right, next up, tidy the mess, which is the ban up. So, conclusion. It's about two and a half weeks, three weeks after I filmed the bulk of this video, um, because I wanted to just to test the exhaust, test the heater. Heat has been running fine. It's been running pretty much all night for the last um, three weeks. It's a lot quieter on low, so you can pretty much not hear the heater when it's running on low in, inside the van. On high, you can still hear the heater um, quite loudly, but that's nothing to do with the bearings. That's more to do with the amount of airflow you're moving. And that would be affected by pretty much any heater when it's on its high settings. Outside, I've got a little clip of the audio here. So this is it currently running on low. After a week or so of having it in situ. And generally I find maybe it sounds a bit quiet. I don't really have a way to quantify it. When it's running on max, it is still quite loud and audible. When the heater is running on um, its lower setting, so it's got the van up to temperature, it is very quiet outside and you could hardly hear it apart from the ticks. Um, the tick is a little bit louder than, it, than the exhaust is running on low. What I will say long term, it'll be interesting to see how well that exhaust works because normally when you put the exhaust on the heaters, you want to remove the amount of um, bends in your exhaust pipe. So there isn't constriction of the airflow or the exhaust and that exhaust has quite a few tight bends in it. So it's interesting to see long term what happens. Overall, extremely happy with the heater and how it looked like in inside after 2000 run hours. I'd say that was actually pretty clean. I don't know if it makes any difference, but I generally only use premium diesel in the van because I get way better miles per gallon. And that's got additives for cleaning engines. I don't know what effect that has on heaters. And then also up in the Arctic, I was using the winter grade diesel, uh, which people do complain that can cause issues with the heater, but I've not seen any of those problems. Uh, but not all heaters are equal, especially uh, the Chinese made heaters. There's a huge variety because I know plenty of people who have had them in for four or five years, far longer than I have, and have been clean as a whistle and no problems. And I also know people who have had never had them to work from the first go or they soot up and completely clog in the first few hours. So that could be anything down to user error to just it being a terrible version of the heater they've received. But if you want to watch any other, other videos I've done about heating or where I've used it, check out the Arctic trip and that playlist. Or if you want to see about some of the other diesel heater related things, check some of the other videos I've got. If you want to buy any of the bits I've shown in this video, I should have some links in the description. But once again, thank you for joining me. I'll see you next time. Cheers. Bye.